you guys like dinosaur oh, jokes? Jesus. Come on, guys. We'll spice it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ready? Better be. Three dinosaurs come across a magical lamp one day. And the first dinosaur rubs it and a genie appears. We love that, right? We do. Just say we do. We do, Father. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't go. agree to things where I don't understand the terms and conditions. Listen. Okay, the first dinosaur rubs it and a genie appears. Nothing rubs what? Nothing has changed the, yet. The, the lamp. magical lamp. Okay, that yeah, should be an important okay. thing to put in there. He said that. Yes. Did he? Yeah, you're not actively listening, Zaid. <laughs> exactly. God okay. So he stands up and says, I have three wishes, one for each of you. The first dinosaur doesn't hesitate before his request. All right, I will have a big, juicy piece of meat. Sounds like Zaid. Uh, immediately, a big, juicy piece of meat appears. Wow. He is, you know, up in flames with excitement. <laughs> up, up in flames. <laughs> It what was it, the asteroid that hit right when he rubbed the lamp? <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> He's like, my meat. <laughs> Instantly envious, the second dinosaur speaks up. Well, I want a shower of meat. As soon as he utters his wish, a shower of meat rains down upon him, dude. What's crazy? A what's a shower of meat look and like? Is it like rain? Yeah, it's like just rainfall? raining meat, you know? It's a ribeye coming with from a chance. the sky. <laughs> ribeyes from the sky. No, no, no. It's, it's cloudy with a chance of uh, meat. There we go. Got to keep your ribeye on the sky. <laughs> yeah. <you> gotta... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that might be a better joke, but we'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> the third dinosaur, not to be outdone, has to think for a second about what could possibly be better than a shower of meat. Hmm. Aha! I've got it, he says. I'll have a meteor shower. <laughs> Some dumbass dinosaur, bro. <laughs> Like, look, Logan likes it. It's so <laughs> dumb. That's I know. The point. Yeah. But he already called it halfway through. He was like, what kind of meteor shower is this or whatever? <laughs> I don't know how I feel about these jokes. Listen, man. Can you tell a better one? Yeah. Can no. you? I can. At least he's honest. <laughs> I can. Well, actually, what? I can. Yo, we'll tell it right now, then. COVID. Zade's life. <laughs> <laughs> You know I got a point. You know I got a point too. But mine's sharpened. <laughs> we all got a point. <laughs> or Biden. <laughs> Just start throwing out names. Oh, Cuomo. Man. Pelosi. <laughs> I think Cuomo's Moving actually. on. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Oh. We're, all, we're only friends here. You know. <laughs> only friends. <laughs> How convenient. The, the website where Does you that, pay to kick yeah. it with your homies. Yeah, literally. <laughs> does that spark uh, a topic for you? It actually does. Um, I can't stop laughing. Nice transition, well. by the way. What a great morning. Yeah, what a great morning. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the 2 a.m. podcast. Back to the Only Friends <laughs> podcast. Speaking of Only Friends, I have some uh, shit to talk about Only Fans. Oh, my God. And it's Spice some very it interesting stuff. So Yes. We start off with a little story. Now, bear with me I while I read that. this passage. Sure, sure. The, the holy script. The title. Holy text. <laughs> the holy text. I said texture. Yeah. The title is, this is the title. You're thinking of scripture. I've been depressed and su suicidal because of my mom's OnlyFans. Okay. I'm 13. By the way, this isn't you. This is a yes, testimony yeah, you're this reading. Is a of course, bro. Okay, thank God. It's in the voice of Zade, though. Anyway. I'm 13 and my mom is 33. Things, the things at school were never great. I'm sort of short, so I got picked on some... What the fuck? He doesn't even... Uh, he's 13, granted. You just, just read it through. Give him yeah. some leeway. That was until one of my classmates showed me a picture of my mom naked. I almost had a panic attack and had to be excused from the classroom. I ended up not showing up to school for a few days, faking sick. I was hoping that things would cool off, but they didn't. As soon as I got to school, almost everyone in my class stared and laughed at me. This has been going on for about a week now. I was wondering how my classmates even got the pictures. And apparently my mom advertises her OnlyFans on her personal Twitter account. Some students from my school follow her, so they were able to see the nudes, and they have been spread everywhere. I don't even have a Twitter, so I wouldn't know anything about this. The worst part is when I was confronted by my mom, or when I confronted my mom about this, she told me that I was overreacting and that sex work is basically the same thing as working at a bank or a grocery store. She also said it makes her feel good about herself and that I should be happy that she's more confident now. I told the principal, but they can't suspend thousands of students or take away anyone's phones. Mm -hmm. I've been crying in my room every day for the past week. I don't think I can take it anymore. 
That's uh, another kind of trauma. There's a lot to unpack <clears throat> there. There is a lot. There's a lot of angles to go down on that route. Because on the one hand, yeah, I mean, who cares about sex work, right? Like, do it if you want to do it. But at the same time, she's essentially outcasting her son mm -hmm. and like one fell swoop and she's like i'm doing better now and it's like your child is doing worse now right yeah that like i feel like that's something you wouldn't say to your son that's something you would say to your partner you know i feel more confident now why don't you be happy for me uh, it's just a bullshit rationalization in my opinion but yeah the outcasting of the son is really what triggers me that's the, that's the part where it gets complicated mm -hmm. right because there's a lot of questions that aren't answered there. Like, is that the mom's primary source of income? I don't know. Right? Like, is that how she's mm -hmm. paying for school? I would assume so. Well, I mean, we don't know. Like, we don't know the answer to that. But it, I don't even know what to say. Mm -hmm. Like, you really. know what? You know what's funny? People might think that I have a very, that this is a bit of a hypocritical. What was the, what's the word? Not hypocratic. Hypocritical? hypocritical okay jesus hypocritical point from me but i agree with prostitutions prostitution and i don't I, agree with only fans these prostitutions <laughs> yeah i agree with them I, I do i do say <laughs> because the difference being is that with only fans you have a lot more young women who are attracted to this model of business and that creates a culture of degeneracy for lack of a better word whereas Whereas prostitution, there are barriers to get into being a prostitute. You don't see, you know, you don't see a, a 18, 19 year old prostitute for the most part that often. Oh, are you kidding me? You don't see You're it that joking, often. Compared right? to OnlyFans girls. You're kidding. Compared to OnlyFans girls. Wow. Those words really came out of your mouth. Yeah. I, one, not true by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of 18, 19 year old prostitutes that are going around, especially if you want to get really into it. A lot of underage prostitutes as well, which is Well, yeah, that definitely, that definitely exists. T -t 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 topic of debate. Oh, let's get, oh, you, <laughs> let's get started. That's a good point. <laughs> ah. But yeah, there's a lot of prostitutes that are 18 to 19 years old, especially with the sex trafficking that's going on, not just in the U.S., but outside of it as well. I'm not talking about sex trafficking. Leave that out. Yeah, but to talk about prostitution, a big part of that involves sex trafficking, at least in how it's structured of right Of course, now. but we're talking about people who willfully go into the industry. Okay, that changes everything. It does change everything. Why would I include fucking but you kinda, sex trafficking? But you have to. Because that's a huge part of prostitution. But the argument here yeah. is that OnlyFans yeah. is a willful <laughs> thing that you're doing. And we're talking about yeah. how it impacts the culture. Yeah, that, that's his argument. It's that it's different. As, as, a, as a willful job, you are, you know, entering it. Like in this case, being a 33-year-old mother and having a 13-year-old son. She is actively making the decision to put her son in that position. Because no fucking 13-year-old should be put in that position, in my opinion. Yeah. Well... Okay, so think about it from, like, another perspective, right? What if there was, uh, like, your, your father or your mother was, like, a politician of some sort, and you were a fuck-up, and they always just needed you to have, like, a certain image to portray because you belong in that family. Like, you know, she has a certain image to portray, so therefore the son needs to behave properly, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, this feels like it's the opposite of that where it's the mom effing up and the son has an image to portray. Therefore, it's just kind of, you know, causing uh, problems. Mm. And in his case, it seems very emotional, like kind of on the verge of trauma. Well, he's suicidal. Yeah, so. yeah it's definitely fucking cool. trauma. Yeah, he's suicidal because every day he goes to school, <sighs> he gets shown photos of his mom. That's, no, man, no. that's messed up. That's not even, I wouldn't even say that's natural. That's normal. So here's, Whoa. here's, what um, mean, what do you mean that's normal? Like, do you mean it's I normal think, what he's feeling? No, no. What I'm saying is that that's not a normal thing to see. It's not a normal thing for someone to show you. Oh, you know? it's not normal. Hey man, look of at your course. mom. Of you know? course. That's the point. That, yeah. The whole point is that what, what's, what's going on, man? What's going on with the shape of the universe right now with people? Like shape what happens with people? Like, is there like. If I'm going to do an action, why am I not thinking about that action? I just do it, like, as if it's just very normal now. 
you know? Well, that's that's a part of the culture now, but... um, Very, very strange. Just pay attention to that in the upcoming years, of course. I do have a statement from... um, This is based off of the thing I just... The story I just read, and it comes from Alexander Cortez, but he uh, he mentions Mm. that sexuality is inherently a private and sacred experience. It's, It's intuitive to men and women that overexposing oneself in a sexual manner invites perversion, judgment, and debasement. Mm -hmm. You can be sexy, but when you offer yourself as an explicitly sexual object purely for men to jerk themselves (laughs) off to, and money is exchanged uh, for this, you've crossed the threshold of prostitution. This generation of women that normalize online sex work is going to be traumatized and dehumanized beyond anyone's reckoning. And this is from AJA Cortez? I... Yeah, this is his perspective. This is his perspective. I, I think I'm going to have to disagree with Mr. AJ. The fact that he, the thing where I really differ on that, well, a lot of places, but when he refers to OnlyFans, like people who have a subscription page as prostitutes, no, I disagree. Like, let me ask you a question. If you mm-hmm. pay for a premium, like, porn website, right? Like, you pay the $8.99 a month or whatever it is. Are all of the people on that page prostitutes then? Or are they you know, adult film a- actors. I think I think he focuses less on the definition and more on. But he explicitly states it. In you're his technically statement. prostituting yourself, in one form or another. It might might not be physically. Yeah, but you're doing that in almost any job, right? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I mean, just the the line of work varies from job to job. So I wouldn't view them as prostitutes per se. Yeah, I would say that they're capitalizing on a situation 100% mm-hmm. because they can, mm-hmm. right? And, I mean, I, I don't blame them for participating in it if they want to make money. You know, with the situation where you've got a kid and he's being bullied and, and wants to kill himself, that's a whole different mm-hmm. dilemma, right? But for primarily the younger women, you know, that you're referring to, probably the 18 to 24 mm-hmm. range or something like that, if they're comfortable with that, and they make a lot of money, which in some cases they do really quickly. I don't see why not. Well, of course, it's their choice. At the same time, what are they doing to impact the culture as a whole? Well, here's what I here's the problem I have with the argument. It's that it's to me, it's kind of like on the same side of saying cigarettes are a gateway drug just because you inhale and exhale. <laughs> okay. Do you get what I mean? Like, I get that. Like, like I want to believe in what uh, Alex Cortez is, is saying, which is... Well, I was just offering a different perspective. Yeah, yeah. Perspective. It's, it's a, it's a nice perspective. Like, I, I totally understand that. I think it's more on the extreme side, at least the way it was explained by him. <clears throat> I agree. Um, but I wouldn't shy away from it because I do see his perspective in a sense that I guess in... <laughs> In a perfect world, it would be considered prostitution because it's just so, it just, no matter what, if you do the math, it's going to cross the threshold of some sort of industry. It doesn't mean it's going to totally be prostitution. It's just, it could go in that direction, but once you're about to hit prostitution, it turns into like five other routes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's kind of like, it's the, it's the sparking root of something. Yeah. Like, I can't deny that cigarettes won't get you into smoking something else. And you're saying that, it, like, but for example, if you start... Mo- yeah, just, let's just say, statistically speaking, a lot of people just stick to cigarettes. Yeah. Right? But you'll always have, like, 3% that went somewhere else. So I get that, but I think that's still an extreme-sided... Uh, well, it's an extreme situation. Like, you're, it is you're talking about 18-year-old girls who are showing their fucking vaginas and tits to yeah, millions of guys on the internet. <sighs> That's what it, they want to do, and they get paid a lot of money to do it. Bro, that's it, the problem. Here's, here's the thing, man. Incentivized to destroy the culture. Do you and know what? How is that, is, how's that destroying culture, well, though? Yeah. You have to realize that's such a small subset of the population that's actually participating in those activities. I'd say a and lot bigger. you have bigger. to remember, OnlyFans isn't just U.S. It's globally, if yeah, I'm not global. mistaken. Anywhere so a lot of the dollars that are coming in aren't necessarily directly from the U.S. They're probably from outside countries as well. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. So it's like, how are you? How are you deteriorating culture, right? Well, how also does it, that's dude, your opinion. That's his opinion on what culture is. Look, maybe mm-hmm. that's a part of culture. If there's anything the being deteriorated, it. it is men. Okay, we are the problem. 
I don't know if you noticed that. I'm Only you not, do you not think women are the problem? Bro, no. No. What do you mean no? no. I'll tell because you why. Because we're the ones incentivizing it. Yes. We're the ones who are paying. Only I, I would say there's more responsibility on men. But on the same side, women also have to take responsibility for this shit. I, I disagree. Okay. Well, how do you we set up the system for them to do this? Yes. Like, but so here, yeah, they're only doing exactly wow. what we wanted them to do. It's more on the blame of men, way more than it is on women. Way more. I agree. Like way more. In fact, I would actually put mostly, if not all of the blame on men. Because it's only simps who are paying for this crap. Yeah. At the so end like the imagine I just put food out for my neighbor's cat. And the first time she was scared to come, but she came and she ate for free. Right. Mm hmm. And then the second time, it took her longer to come this time. And then she came and ate for free again. But then the third time, she wouldn't come at all. So I offered her money. And she came and ate the bowl. Right? Who's at fault? I am. Because now I'm throwing out incentives. Mm -hmm. I'm bribing. <laughs> and in most cases, you'll, you'll get to see this. Um, Only fans, you know, people that... Any job in the world... The first day, it's always going to be weird. It's going to feel like a new environment. It's going to be like you don't really know the ins and outs of things, right? Stay there for a year. You're going to be so accustomed. You're going to be training people. Mm -hmm. It's right? true. Same thing with OnlyFans. You get so comfortable with it, it could turn into something crazier. Like yeah. prostitution. And if I, and in my honest opinion, I think that if there's money exchanged for a night out or whatever, you know, with certain terms, you know, that's prostitution. I'll say this. For the amount of money that they're generating or some of these accounts are generating yes. on like a consistent basis, mm -hmm. there's zero need that they would need to be prostitutes. Let's, let's forget about those big accounts. How about the majority of accounts that are making a small amount of money? Because they're, they're uh, infatuated with the idea that they can earn thousands of dollars a month doing this shit. What about them? That's where I see mo most of the problem at. Because, of course, you have the 1% the accounts that are making just absolute insane amounts of money. Um, but with, with younger girls and with uh, most of the people who get into this, I feel like they're, they have this compulsive need to do it as opposed to making money some other way. Just because they see all this stuff on social media and... I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what really grinds my gears. It's, it's, it's the, the problem is it's not, you don't just go to OnlyFans.com and then search for whatever you want. It's given to you, whether you like it or not, through car pages, through uh, brutal video pages, through meme pages, through everything. Or sometimes it'll be like some stupid video of like, you know, like a volleyball player and it'd be like, check out her own free OnlyFans on, at the bottom. Like, what, what the, I'm just here to watch. I'm on a sports page, man. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see this. <laughs> it's 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, you know? I should be eating three tacos right now. Well, a lot of dudes want to see it. Taco Tuesday. Baby. Yeah, Taco Tuesday, for real. But and, and, yeah, it's not OnlyFan Mondays. Like, God damn it, dude. Like, <laughs> OnlyFan Fridays. Yeah, like, like <laughs> what is there? I don't know, man. It's just, I think it's, it's people's... People having nothing to do 24-7 causes stupid-ass websites like this to exist. Mm-hmm. Right, because I have ha if I have nothing to do and nothing to think about that's beneficial to my life, mm -hmm. I'm gonna rely on this crap. I'm gonna feel like a special person on here because what I, I get DM'd by this private person that I paid for, yeah, or that they paid to yeah. talk to you exactly. So what? what the I don't know. I just think that you know placing a huge or a decent amount of blame on women for having an OnlyFans page is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, that's. Just just that's like well, no, I think I like I said, I think men are responsible for a lot of the blame, mm -hmm. but you can't just give a free pass to women. They're also in the shit. Well, I'm not giving a blatant free pass, like in the case of the mom, mm -hmm. right? Like, great. I'm glad that she gained confidence. She's making some maybe secondary income off of it. Whatever. That's fantastic. But when your child comes to you and they try to, you know, what is it confine confide confine anyways like rationalize her position not rationalize but i mean like if the son goes to the mother and tries to explain to her like listen i'm getting bullied left and right mm -hmm. like these kids won't stop making fun of me i'm feeling suicidal depressed x y and z and the mom's like well i'm feeling great 
that's a problem. Yeah, that's like saying. That's, but that's, that's like not, saying that's, really. That's not a majority of cases. That's, that's a fringe. Case. I know, I know, but that's the core mentality behind it all. It's teaching women to act like this because they are the center of attention. They they have to develop a narcissistic attitude uh, towards all of this. Yeah. And it's more the mentality behind it and how it how it bleeds into every other aspect of culture. Like, look at the look at the dating market. OnlyFans is throws a huge monkey in the or a monkey in the wrench because of that. Like, how do you approach dating? With with you talk to people? No, I know that, but with the understanding that a lot of women have an OnlyFans account. What are you What are you even saying? How do you begin to? Oh, like what? Can you try to rephrase your question? Okay, let me think about are you it. Ta- are, you, are you talking in terms of loyalty, trust? I mean, those play a part. That's an interesting question. Would you date somebody that has an OnlyFans Fuck account? Fuck no. no. Yeah, I'm on the same page as you. There you go. Yeah, I would have to say no. <laughs> hey, we agreed. Yeah. High five, guys. <laughs> we agreed on something. I guess that's the point. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make is that it leads to this degenerate mentality that a lot of guys are willing to date somebody who has an OnlyFans account. And what's wrong with that? What do you mean what's wrong with that? I think it's it's distasteful. It's well, you. That's the key word. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an, it is it's very opinionated. Of course. There's always going to be that man that it loves a trophy. A trophy you know? shows a sort of accomplishments. What are your accomplishments? Men? I don't want to know, but <laughs> yeah, like to some dudes they might actually enjoy that because they're like, yeah, all of you fuckers pay for it. Yeah. And I mean, I pay for it cuz like, you know, meals and like we go out on dates and shit like that, but that's mm-hmm. whatever. He's like, but she's mine. Yeah. Like that might be a huge yeah sure and my day to day life just moves very flowy and I like it yeah and I'm always comfortable so I don't know it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth yeah <laughs> I mean of course it always is you know that's just who you are I believe that's how all we all are kind of yeah in this room yeah um, I'm actually surprised you're taking such like a Puritan stance on this Zade well I mean normally I'm very very open minded like I have no point. problem with prostitution. Yeah. But I, I'm, a, I'm very liberal on that point, but I'm trying to see how it impacts various aspects of culture, and I don't think it's a net positive. I, I was, yeah, yeah, go for it. Sorry. I was gonna say I wish this kid was a little bit older, honestly, because I, I think that it's it's gonna be, it's gonna mess him up for life. The fact that he's 13 years old, right? Because he's in that stage of uh, getting bullied, and yeah. it sucks for him because he's getting bullied about something that men like. And it's been proven through class, you know? That's not the issue. Men will always like that. But it's the yes. idea that his mother is trying but to what justify would you, it. Like, what would you do in that situation? Can we actually talk about, a like, a sub-issue of this? How are 13-year-olds Googling all this porn? Like, obviously, they have access a, to the it's, internet, it's but just it's a like button now. 13. It's just, no, I mean, like, 13 years old, just like. I mean, I'm sure 8-year-olds are hip to it. I'm sure 5-year-olds are hip to it now. Jesus. Yeah. I would not be surprised. It's, um, it's a scary world, man. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And that is why I like, for the generations to come, I always say this. I'm actually terrified for them. Because I don't know if they're going to be as, like, balanced as, like, as we have been, you know? Mm-hmm. People that I come across that are in my age group, you know, including us, we all relatively have the same, like, like balanced mentality you know we're not really extreme forms of anything except when it comes to like maybe some political things <laughs> but <laughs> but that's us you know yeah. that's just our generation the generation to come they're so heavily focused on let's just say you know their biggest form of knowledge is through tiktok okay that's, that's actually how, probably a fair statement yeah and that is amazing. and honestly that's already terrifying enough i'm not even gonna go down the list <laughs> just start with tiktok but you, you get what I mean. And I wanted to ask the question, what would you do in that situation if you were the 13-year-old and you happened to come across this? It would hurt anybody, of course. You're I mean, 13, especially, there's nothing to do. Yes. You can't do anything. But I, would, I know what I would do in my, like, in my age group today. I know what I would do. I would cut off ties with my mom, dude. Oh, 100%. 100,000%. That's what you would do? Yeah. 100,000%. 100%. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I have, like, think about it, man. And at this, at this age, I have left so many things behind. Mm-hmm. I know this is going to hurt, but it's nothing new. I can move on. I don't want to be associated with that if my mom does I, that shit. Literally. 
It's, it goes back to the whole, I have an image to portray. I'm not trying to do this. <laughs> Sorry. All right. You get what I mean? Like, I, I truly think there's some something fundamentally wrong with guys who date a woman who has an OnlyFans account. There's something I, just, it, it just feels off. That's it's just like. <laughs> that's fine. Maybe off the wall. That's and, sure. and here's the thing. I'm not saying ban OnlyFans. I'm not saying ban prostitution. Those things have their place in the market. Uh, what I want to try to convince people of is, you know, if you're a young woman entering this stage of her life, there are a lot of other ways you can make money. Yeah, you know what women like when you tell them how they how they should be making money and how they should live. Well, their life. trust me, I know most women are going to make the decisions to make an account. Yeah, most well, women are going to make an OnlyFans account. Or many, to many, Zade. many. Most women. Many young women. I still think many is way yeah. too big of a number. <laughs> way too big of a word. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I literally don't know. That's the thing. But I do see it as a very big problem because it's just, it just keeps rising. It's not like it's going downhill. It's going uphill. I don't, I don't see it as a problem, right? It's not a problem for people like us. No. Like it well, literally, yeah. well, I mean, when I say people like us, I mean people who don't have an OnlyFans account mm -hmm. and we don't subscribe mm -hmm. to their services. That's not a problem for us, right? That's only, I don't even know who that would be a problem for, right? Like, if you want to argue younger women like that, they may have a problem with doing that. If they want to do it and they're, you know, of legal age where they can partake in activities of that nature, yeah. mm -hmm. I say let them do it, right? I've probably said that three or four times already. Yeah, nobody's them stopping them. Dude, we can all, the, all this, we have one person to blame. Netflix. Because they started subscription-based business. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix. What was Netflix. Uh, what was the subtopic you wanted? Did we speak about? You said you wanted to. No, I, no, I already said the subtopic of like, what's up with all these thirteen year olds pulling up porn? And oh, shit? oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I said. That that's a whole. <laughs> that's a whole. That's a whole other thing because it was like, never mind. We don't need to get into it. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, it, the world is changing, and whether it's for the good or the worse, I I don't know at this point. Because you can really, I think it's it's how you structure your your daily life and what you want to see, down to like what news source, you know, that kind of shapes your day to day life. So you could be, you know, it could be in your blind spot, like all this stuff happening, mm -hmm. but you don't really see it because you don't want to see it. Well, I mean, I'm just talking primarily out of like you know mm -hmm. personal experience because when I, when I was 13, it was like, who do you have a crush on? Yeah, you know, it was yeah. like, who do you think's cute? Like this and that. Like, oh, are you dude, interested? Yeah, in I anybody? heard Ashley's having a sleepover. And time. now all of a sudden, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like these thirteen-year-olds have OnlyFans accounts. Yeah, which is so wrong so bad. on so many it's levels. So bad. Which makes me wonder, what's OnlyFans' terms for like making an account? Don't you need to like verify your birth date? Well, no, you will. Somehow you can put button. in any number. You click a button and put you, your. You, put in yeah, any... they, you think they care, huh? Yeah, yeah, you think they're asking for your last four digits of your social to verify <laughs> your age? Like, no, they don't do that shit. No, they don't care. In fact, their industry kind of, I wouldn't say thrives, but like that's a big part of it, where you just don't have to put in your age and yeah. shit like that. Like verification has always been kind of like a. A gray area, yeah. I guess you could well, say. Well, it's funny because of I'm almost sure... Almost any industry, really. I'm sure the verification is, are you eighteen? Are you over 18 or not? Click no, yes. yes. Click, Click yes. yes. That's all that. Oh, thank you so Because, I mean, it's Great like, verification how are you going to... Like, how else would you verify yeah. other than, like, a social security thing? Uh, put a picture of your face... Or put a live picture of your face and then put, like, your card. I don't know. Yeah, but how does your credit card prove your age? What are they going to do? Track down what type Wait, of debit account that you have? I'm sure, I'm sure there's something you could put. What, in order to have a credit card, don't you have to be 18? No. No. Wait, unless you're under your parents. Yes. Yes, there you go. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> what are they going to do? Track down your account through, like, Wells Fargo or yeah. Chase? Like, Hello, Wells Fargo. It's so like, oh, he's on the family plan. He's yeah. not eligible. Like, yeah. no, they're not going to do that. Oh, college account. He must be over 18. <laughs> Do you have anything else you would like to say? It looks like you prepped a lot. No, yeah. no, I should be good in that department. I just thought it was an interesting thing to bring up, considering it, the it, it was. The I rise mean, it, it sparked a debate here. That was a debate yeah. for sure. It yeah. was a it was a debatey. You know something I would like to bring up actually. Oh, what? Oh, actually, real quick. Yeah, what? go for it. This, go for this it. is pretty funny. What? So this uh, this young lady, a married pastor who quit church to become a stripper after coming out as queer, says selling X rated content on OnlyFans is her new calling. How convenient. Wait, the pastor. Yeah, is queer but identifies 
No, no, forget about her being queer. The fact that she made the transition from being a pastor to go, making an OnlyFans account and then calling it her calling. Pretty convenient, isn't it? What do you mean convenient? Like, a woman of God who just transitioned it, transitions into the most. Hey, man. What about that is convenient? Listen. Any step of that journey is not convenient. No, no, no. <laughs> listen, listen. Convenient for her need for f recognition and money. What? What are you talking about? Her calling. Okay, okay. Like the calling from the Lord? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the original thing. Like to become a pastor or a minister, you have the calling of what is it? The divine calling? Yeah. And then you go in and then you start the whole process. It takes like that's what? That's not what she's talking about. She's talking about OnlyFans yeah. work being no. a calling. No, we get that. Yeah. We understand that's, that. But I'm okay, trying okay, to understand I, your I, I get, point. It's funny. I'm trying to understand your point. Like I just th I just think it's funny. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I get like that. How, you, how can you make that fucking jump? Well, I don't know. Your world is whatever you want it to be, so good for her. Well, her calling changed, apparently. Yeah, her you know, calling. People are allowed to change. They, <laughs> Man, of course. Someone needs calling caller. changed to sucking dick. <laughs> someone needs caller ID. I don't know if that's what yeah. it was. Jesus. I'm sure that's included in that's, the package. That's a big assumption. Yeah. Big leaps. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> well, if she came out as weird, never mind. But, I, it doesn't matter. The point Anyways. is, it was her calling. So yeah. that's yeah. what that's, I heard. Ordained that's, by God himself. No, I don't think that's what she was saying. <laughs> but God wants her to have a private jet, dude. God wants me to roll around in a private jet. Do you remember that? Like the mega churches? It was like, didn't he didn't he, he already have like one or two jets? Yeah. And he's like, we need an extra 20 mil for yeah. this new one. And it'll help us it. spread the message. They paid it. <laughs> that's a whole nother problem. Mega churches. Like, gee, have we talked about that on the podcast? Before? We have, yeah. But probably we, a bunch. We have a bunch because yeah. Every time we bring up a pastor or, or anything of that nature. Is it, who is it? Is it Rick Warren or Orin or whatever? He's like the. I, I'm, I don't remember I, his or name. Or am I thinking of somebody else? I'm not sure, to be honest. I, I, think, I think I'm thinking of somebody else. But, but yeah. uh, something I actually did want to bring up, though, that mm -hmm. I thought was interesting was, have you heard about the firings of, um, that have been going on at the Olympics? And I don't mean like shootings, fire. I mean yeah, like yeah. people getting, getting fired. losing their job. Why? Why? What? Because of. It some of the terms are some of the most ridiculous shit I have ever heard. For example, one of which there was an employee who allegedly, according to this article, got fired because in his, I believe, middle school record, he was uh, labeled as or he was suspended for bullying children. What? Yeah. And then he talked about it. He's like, yeah, when I was younger, I was a bully. And he's like, I didn't like that. And so, like, you know, I've changed over time. Mm -hmm. And he got fired for that. Wow. Just for that. <laughs> wow. What is Japan on? And there was a, I don't even know if it's Japan. It might just be the Olympic Committee. What the fuck are they on? I don't know. But there was also another instance where a guy, I think he was, it was either he made a sexist or racist joke in private mm -hmm. like 20 years ago. And it got brought up in conversation. Fired. Fired. Wow. Axed. Well, to be to be honest, I don't know what's going on with this year's Olympics, but it seems like a joke. <laughs> yeah, it's the lowest rating in like 33 years. What is going on? And it, like, I saw the guy um, that uh, got his uh, pants ripped, basically, in half. Did you see that? No, I didn't. Was he, wait, it, was he a, a weightlifter? No, he was, uh, I forgot what he was doing, but it was some sort of sand pit. And oh, long he, jump? I think it was a long jump. Yeah, yes. It was a long jump, and he landed on his ass, and it burnt it off, and then it just kind of, like, when he got up, you can see his taint, like, through the... <laughs> he had no underwear on? No. Damn, dude. It's like, so it's then... free balling at the Olympics. Yeah, well, God, yeah. that, is a, that is another level it's of like, confidence. Uh, it's like the video of the NFL running back running the 40. His dick yeah. just comes out of his fucking shorts. Are you serious? For, oh bro, at least three-fourths of the run. Oh, my God. His dick is just flopping around in the wind. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> Embarrassing. Wait. That's funny. That, I also like that he was focused enough to not give a shit. Yeah, you're and running the 40 it. in the NFL. Like, you can't yeah. care. You got bigger priorities going on. How was that? How did... Well, I don't even want to... No, whatever. That sucks. But <laughs> That sucks. I, I hate that shit to the core. The whole idea that you can just fire somebody based off of something they did 20 years ago. Well, I, somebody made a joke online. It was actually pretty clever. They're like, yeah, remember um, remember when you were in like middle school and you always heard those rumors about, oh, it's going on your permanent record? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that actually follows. That's now a thing you have to worry you about. Just, you just have to be in like this super, you know, exclusive role. 
for it to be like drastic enough. Me waiting for an employer to fire me over one of my tweets. Yeah. <laughs> what one of? Good luck searching <laughs> through the fifty thousand of them. Jesus. Oh, we found one. It's the like, latest one. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> it's like dated yesterday. Here Dave. you are talking yeah. shit about vegans. Hmm. hmm. Yesterday oh, morning. <laughs> This Olympics, like, if you want to get into it, if you want to, like, get into the problem with the Olympics, I guess, or at least with this one, it's not Japan, so so to say, like, beautiful country to host the Olympics in, super cool, great technology, awesome food, great culture. So, like, on that front, there's nothing wrong with that. However, if I remember correctly, there was a poll mm -hmm. conducted um, or that was sent out to the Japanese populace, right? And they were asked questions about like, do you approve of this? Do you um do you even want the Olympics to come? Are you comfortable with how much the government's like spending this that? And like eighty two some odd percent of citizens were like, we do not want this to happen. And I think the number one reason was for COVID problems mm. because Japan already has a pretty rough COVID situation, mm -hmm. given like their work culture and also how everybody's you know they're closed in on tight buses and whatever or sorry not buses uh trains. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want it for COVID reasons. Also, the Olympics cost billions of dollars, no matter what country you're hosting it in, right? Mm -hmm. And Japan was already having financial issues, from what I was understanding. And then they were like, oh, yeah, here's another several billion dollars <laughs> that we don't know how we're going to afford. And then it got put on hold. So they lost even more money having to wait for the Olympics. They had to re-advertise everything, mm -hmm. you know, basically a second advertising run. Even more money, hundreds of millions gone. And now that they're there, I don't even think a lot of tourists were allowed to show up anyway, so they couldn't sell a whole bunch of Olympic merch. Yeah, A lot of their seats that were filled were primarily filled by Japanese citizens, which is cool. But at the same time, they could have charged higher price tickets, you mm -hmm. know, to foreigners, theoretically. And the whole thing's kind of just a shit show, just in yeah. general. And like, at the end of all that, you get fired. <laughs> <laughs> because you because you bullied somebody when you were like I, eight I really or nine. What the hell, dude? I really don't know why Japan thought that was a good idea to even host I don't, it. Yeah. They should have just canceled the Olympics outright. They, well, they had billions invested. They built all the facilities. They already had all of the merch made. They yeah. When did they start building? Probably, I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but I would imagine probably somewhere between 2017 and 2018. Yeah. So before COVID. So, yeah. So. Yes. That's COVID has messed up a lot of things. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Who would have guessed? Yeah. Would have. <laughs> well, here's the thing. In, in our day to day, we see things, you know, like things are opening. No more masks are required, like things like that. So it feels like everything's slowly going back to normal. But then you hear about the Delta variant and you're like, the Delta plus. Uh, now nah, I'm good. You, you know, know about Delta plus? You know about Delta plus, bro? Yes, I do. It's a new variant. I didn't know about it till today. I don't know. Zade brought it up to me. Yeah. It's uh, the roided out version of the Delta variant, apparently. Really? Delta Plus. Delta Plus. Apparently, that's the name. I don't know what's going on, man. This is terrible. This is terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, I won't believe in any new variants until I see real evidence. Oh, so. there's some until shady you... stuff happening with Spirit Airlines right now. What? what do you mean? Oh, are you talking about the situation with the, the yeah. flight crew and yeah. then the dude who was a piece of shit on the flight? No, yes, but no, at the same time. Are we thinking the story's of a bigger. Are we thinking of a different thing? The guy we, who grabbed we the, might the flight attendant's tits? What? Well, I mean, I don't know about that, but he was, he on, did, the actually. He was on the plane saying shit like, He's like, my parents are fucking rich. Two and a yeah. half million. They're loaded. Yeah. Two and a half million. Oh I could buy this airline. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. From an only fan to a lonely fan. I can guarantee you can't <laughs> buy a, Spirit Airlines. From an only fan to a lonely man. <laughs> <laughs> Homie, your, your parents are not buying Spirit Airlines with two and a half million net worth. Not even close. But here's the story. You couldn't even buy a plane. <laughs> I got the story for or you. Or the fuel. <laughs> so Spirit Airlines has delayed their flight uh, over eight times so far. And there's, a, uh, there's a, been a bunch of families and individuals that are, have been stuck at LAX, travelers, for the past four days. What? Yeah. And they're saying that, oh, there's, like, not a single, oh, there's, like, some crew missing. Uh, we don't have enough crew, like, stuff like that. And they keep delaying the shit out of their flights. So people are pissed off, and people are not even from here, and they're just stuck at the airport. You know, they got places to be. Um, they 
reached out to Spirit, and there was a guy that tweeted from the flight from Vegas to LAX saying, um, I don't know what y'all are talking about, but, but I'm on Spirit right now, and there's more than 10 plus cabin members, like cabin mm. crew. And then everyone's like losing their minds, and it's like an open situation right now. Well, that, that's a different flight. Wait, though. you said the flight was from Vegas to LAX? Yes. So maybe they were loading up all those cabin members to go assist with the situation in LAX. Is that possible? Because if I'm not mistaken, the average well flight from LA, sorry, from LA to Vegas or vice versa, yeah, is not very much. But think it's of, not a long flight. Think of what I said. Four days. How many hours is that? Flights are coming in and out dude. too much. Well, what's the too old, much. what's the reason they just did, they there were is no reason. That's why it's an open situation right now. Uh -huh. They keep blaming it on short staff. Wait, so is Spirit, are they keeping the people at the airport, mm -hmm. or are they providing, like, places for them to go sleep? Um, uh, some of them, from the pictures I saw on Twitter, were from, uh, like, people are just sleeping in airports. Jesus. No God. places to stay. I mean, you paid for Spirit. What do you expect? You Spirit. get me? Yeah, but at the same time, but at the you same time, to get on your flight. Yeah, like, four days is way too much. I'm sure you could sue them for that. That's half a, that's almost half a week. Yeah. I'm sure you can definitely sue them. It has to be a way. It's an open situation right now. I can't wait for, you know, <clears throat> when this episode ends, I will look it up and see if there's any updates. How did they just, I, I don't understand why they would do that. Was it cheaper for them to keep all of those people there than just refund all of their tickets? I, I don't know. I mean, to or begin better with, yet, just give them vouchers for another airline. Their tickets were probably 80 bucks to begin with, which is why I say don't fly with it with spirit, man. <laughs> Like, they should just eat the loss on that. Yeah. Like, because they're getting way, a way bigger amount of damage from this negative PR yeah. than they would have been if they just gave out the vouchers to people. I don't, I don't know what's going on. And I, like, honestly, we already know the solution. It's just... Listen, it's, guys, it's remember... To the, remember it's up to the spirit plane now. You know? Remember that spirit it's spirit plane. airlines <laughs> we're talking about. It's spirit airlines we're talking about. It's not like Delta or something. Yeah, exactly. It's not the Delta variant. It's the spirit plane. <laughs> delta stocks go down once the delta variant becomes yeah dude that's what people were saying that's like same thing with corona yeah that corona like the, beer company that's the funny. jacked and tan yeah. variant <laughs> the, the chad variant that was that was one of my favorite things to come out of 20 um 2020, 2020 was 2020. when corona stock prices fell because people stopped buying corona beer yeah they it was like one of light. the few beers left on the shelf when you remember when people were panicking by so toilet dumb. paper and shit like so that so dumb Corona, Corona Light gives yeah. you a lessened version of the coronavirus. <laughs> I know we started. Corona this. Premium gives you the top tier COVID nineteen. <laughs> it's like good stuff. Yeah. I know we started this with a dinosaur joke, but I'm gonna go back to dinosaurs real quick. There was a there was a photo. It was a cartoon photo, but it was dinosaurs, and they're like, "What is that?" And it's just like a meteor coming through. Right, they're about to all, all get annihilated forever. <laughs> they're like, "Oh my god." Our world is ending. Quick, grab the toilet paper. <laughs> oh, I saw that. I saw that. It's just... Man, it really puts it into perspective what happened there. That was a pretty wild time. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Fucking toilet paper. Out of all things. <laughs> hey, hey. Like, I would have grabbed the toothpaste at least, you know? I mean, actually, now that you think about it, it's like... Kind of makes sense. If society really were to collapse... Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, right? That being said, hypothetically assuming that, like, electrical and water grids are cut off. Mm -hmm. Like, where are you pooping? Outside? Outside. Well, yeah, no. Well, yeah. No shit, pun intended. <laughs> Outside, but, like, <laughs> but like, I mean, you got to throw that somewhere. And you also got the toilet paper to manage with that. So you're just going to have this huge shit Why don't you go pile? for wipes? Wipes I, are way more efficient. Yeah, but they're also worse for the... Uh, I mean, wipes are oh, yeah, worse bro, for the environment, I mean, and they fuck up sewer systems, like, pretty bad, so. Well, in the scenario of, like, listen, we're in an apocalyptic situation. If you're in an apocalyptic situation, gives there's, a there's the way more efficient ways to wipe your ass than, than toilet paper, Using right? Using your hand in water? Oh, I'll start with the lemon tree outside. Then... Yeah, hand, no, I'm with Zade, actually, like, what? hand in water, that's not a bad way to go. That's if the you, old school method. If you're in the place with big leaves, you know, go with that. Yeah. Or, or if you're truly crusty, just don't do anything. Or if, you know, you're willing to clean up, if you're willing to clean up and deal with this, you could just have a towel, you know, that you use as the shit rag, literally. Oh. <laughs> so no. why toilet paper? I was like, yeah. Hmm. But at the same time, I kind of get it. Yeah. Because I, I don't think people were expecting the electrical grid and water system to shut down. During water that. in hand. 
Yeah, that's what I would go with. Yeah. I mean, I've had to resort to do that in some country, some countries. It sucks. But. I don't know. To me, it's like to me, it's like going for the air freshener when shit's about to go down. Like, why? It's useless. <laughs> Bro, because when the air is shit, it needs to be fresh. Because when the meteor hits, I want it to smell like Febreze. Yeah. I also <laughs> I want gonna, that Febreze air scent. In I, here. I need to counter that radiation, you know, with something. <laughs> with some positive <laughs> affirmations. <laughs> with some with some Febreze. With yeah. some <laughs> lemon zest scent Febreze. The, ra- the, ra- <laughs> the radioactive fallout's coming. I'm just gonna tell myself that I can withstand it. <laughs> I'm stronger oh. than this. Yes. It's like, no, that's yeah. when you want to buy yeah. iodine pills. Yeah. You know, so not they... incense. <laughs> that's when you better hope to God that you have an underground infrastructure. Yeah, for real. <laughs> People with fallout shelters be like, I told you. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. <laughs> Why? Uh, I feel like apocalypse preppers want the world to end. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But do they spend so much of their time and money yeah, on it? I feel like they watched one too many seasons of The Walking Dead. But I mean, like, how yeah. pessimistic of a, like, global outlook is that? I'm prepping. I'm prepping because if the world ends, I will be ready. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone else will yeah. be dead. Then I can say I told you so. So, therefore, <laughs> you are the king of shit mountain. Because what you have is shit. <laughs> Listen, dude. I've like, always what? had this image of, like, the, you know, the airsofters that take it way too serious? <laughs> Like, they're actually going to war. Actually, yeah, like, where they buy military-issue, like, clothing yeah. and, like, ammo Like, like you, you ammo see them at the army surplus shit. store, like, shopping for gear. It's just one step above from the serious Call of Duty players. On a Thursday night, and they Bas- have, their moms drop them off on Thursday. You know? Basically, it's dudes who want to act like they have military affiliation, yet they don't want to join the military. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I will, ad- I will say, there are the exception of dudes who, like, were active military at one point or another, mm-hmm. active military personnel, and then they're like, I'm going to get into airsofting. I already have, like, all of my, my uniform and everything. Yeah. So, like, Brings I understand that M4. those people exist, but there are a lot of airsoft dorks out there <laughs> yeah. that, like, want to pretend, and they go, like, way over the top with the spec ops gear and shit. Hey, listen, hey, nothing against that. Like, there's, No, you do you. It's a hobby. Gear. They have some sick gear sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's still nerds. Hobby. Yeah. Still dorks. But it's just funny how they take it so damn serious to the point where it's like, like, I'm not leaving till I'm dead. And it's like, okay, well, that's impossible, first of all. <laughs> no one's dying here unless you have a heart attack. I'm not leaving till I'm the last man standing. <sighs> it's just funny. It's just funny to me, seeing that energy. You know? Yeah. You know what's also funny? What is? 2M podcast. Really? I did not know. Ooh. Well... Who do you think here? Me? Logan? You know? I think you do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because we're the funniest ones here, Zabe. I, I, did, I, did, I don't know. I don't really have anything against that statement. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I am kidding. We're kidding. I'm we're kidding. kidding. So we're going to close this I off with what? I'm kidding. Remind the people where they can find us. Oh, you can absolutely, absolutely, most definitely find us on YouTube at the 2AM Podcast. We also have a side channel called the 2AM Clips. Check us out there. You can find us on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more on all major platforms. Check us out, guys. Tell your friends and family, and we'll see you next time. Peace.